Hi, this is Deb Morley, and you're listening to Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. Once again, on behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I am Doug Benedict, and along with Pastor Jim Jenkins and the entire congregation of Calvary Bible Church, we would like to extend a huge thank you once again for spending another half hour with us. And if this is your first time joining us, we are extra excited that you are here And we hope you do listen for the entire half hour and get a blessing out of the preaching from Pastor Jim Jenkins, as well as the good Southern Gospel music that will be coming up just a little bit later on. But before that, we'll give you just a little history of the church. We are a small congregation located in Gregg, New York. We are on Sweeney Road. The address here is 6968 Sweeney Road in Gregg, New York. So you can put that into your GPS and come join us today times with being the second Sunday of the month, we will begin this morning at 9 o'clock with our fellowship breakfast. And as always, everyone is invited to attend. You don't have to bring anything. Just bring a willingness to visit with people and an appetite because there's always great food here. So that'll be about half an hour. Then we start Sunday school at 9.30. And Sunday school, we do break up into smaller groups There's multiple little kid classes, a couple teen classes, and an adult class upstairs with Pastor Jim Jenkins. And it is a good time to dig deep into God's Word, ask some hard questions, and really study whatever God has laid upon our heart. That runs for an hour. Then we'll start the morning service at 10.30. Then we'll break for half a day, and we'll be back once again tonight at 6 o'clock. Then we break for half a week. And we'll be back Wednesday night starting at 7 o'clock. Now, if you were not able to attend the last few nights, we have had Brother Gerald Fielder here with us, and he will still be here today. So he'll be doing Sunday school at 930 as well as the morning service at 1030. So we do encourage you to come out and join us for that. He's always a great speaker. He always has so much to bring, and you will not regret coming here. So again, that's at 9.30 this morning, and then 10.30 this morning. And then don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, as well as Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And so many people wonder why we come to church so much. It's just a great place to be. I don't know why you wouldn't want to. And Wednesday night is a time to come, and once again, we study certain topics in the Bible. And then at the end, we do break up into small groups and pray for the needs of the church, as well as the area. And whatever people have, whatever burdens you have, you can bring them up to the whole congregation and we will all pray for them. If you do not have a GPS and you want to follow the simple, easy directions, get a piece of paper because there they come. We are located right between Lowville and Boonville. So if you're out of the Lowville area or Watertown, head south onto Route 12. Take that all the way to the Burdick's Crossing Road. If you're out of the Boonville area or Utica, head north on Route 12. Take that all the way to Burdick's Crossing Road. If you're coming out of West Leiden area, head north on 26. Take that all the way to 12D and then head north on Route 12. And once again, take that to Burdick's Crossing Road. And Burdick's Crossing Road is located down in a dip by the Valley Brook Drive-In Movie Theater. Turn on to Burdick's Crossing Road. Take that all the way to the end and head left onto Gregg Road, head up the hill, make your first right-hand turn, and we are up there about 200 yards on the right, and that's Sweeney Road that we are on. If for some reason you can't make it or you need a ride, give us a call. Our phone number is 315-348-6271, and we'll send someone out to pick you up. You can also email us. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. 
And then all else fails, we do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com. And we encourage everyone to go on there and watch some of the past services because there's so much that you can get. Maybe there's something you missed, a day you missed. It is on that website, so go on and check that out. Well, time is quickly moving along. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 11 and verse 26. And if you've ever wondered what the actual definition of a Christian is, today's day and age, everyone just kind of throws it around, and I don't think anyone actually knows what a Christian really is. Well, pastor's going to come, and he's going to tell you what a Christian actually is. See if that measures up to you, and if you can honestly call yourself a Christian. But before that, let's listen to Gold City as they sing, When We Gather at the Table. With the wine and with the bread, I recall the blood you shed, and your body sacrificed forever. But also in my mind are pictures of a time and a special moment still to bread and cup with me but soon a time will come when all is said and done and we'll fellowship That was Gold City when we gather at the table. One day we're going to sit down with God, with the Lord Christ, in his kingdom. One day. Hey, let me ask you a question, dear friend. Are you Are you going to be with him when we sit at the table? When we gather at the table to eat and drink with you, when your heavenly work on earth is done, and your work on earth is through, with your holy wedded bride safely by your side when we gather at a table with you. My question is, are you going to do that? There is coming a day. There's coming a day when that is going to happen. And my friend, that may be closer than you can possibly think. We're watching the Bible unfold right before our eyes. 
Ezekiel chapter 35 predicts the confrontation between the Palestinians and the Israeli people. Ezekiel 38 talks about a confederation of Syria and Iran and Iraq and Russia. Oh, it's happening even now. Jesus is coming. He may come sooner than you may think, friend. He may come this week. He could come today. In Acts chapter 11 and about verse 26, and we had found him. I was talking about Barnabas. Barnabas had went to look for Saul, who we now know to be Paul, the Apostle Paul. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch. Now, Antioch of Syria, when persecution first came to the church, Acts chapter 4, the Bible says they were scattered everywhere. And they went everywhere preaching the word of God. Preaching the word of God. Preaching it, preaching it, preaching it. And the church somewhat dispersed. And the, the center of the church went from Jerusalem. Now, there was still a church in Jerusalem. But the church hub, church activity, went from Jerusalem to Antioch. And so Barnabas went and looked for Saul, found him. I believe the Bible says that they were there for a long time. I believe a couple years after that. But it says... And he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year, there we go, sorry. They assembled themselves with a church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. They were called Christians first. I'll go back to my original question. The original question was, are you going to sit and be in the kingdom of God? Kingdom rule me. If you live in a kingdom, that means somebody is ruling. There's coming a day when Christ is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. In our, in our reading today from the book of Acts, as I said a few moments ago, the church center, the, the center of the church activity had moved from Jerusalem, where there was a great deal of persecution, to the city of Antioch, to the north. There the disciples sent out Paul and Barnabas on the missionary trip, and there there was a great controversy over keeping the law, and they sent back word to Jerusalem. But there's something rather unique about the church at Antioch. There was Bible preaching, Bible teaching going on. That was not unique. They were assembling themselves together. Now, we find that to be unique in this day. My friend, you realize that most churches, I'm talking most churches in our area, had Sunday morning, Wednesday night. They had prayer meeting night, which is Wednesday night. They had Sunday night service. Most churches don't have that. Anymore. They say, well, why is that, preacher? Because they can't get anybody to come. Now, the thing about the church at Antioch, they assemble themselves together. The Bible, how can I say this word? The Bible exhorts us to be ready. The Bible encourages us not only to be ready, but the Bible encourages us to exhort one another and not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But oh boy, we sure see that today. There are many churches that have one service on Sunday morning and then the church is closed the rest of the week. What kind of church is that? Well, we went to church on Sunday morning. Oh, you wouldn't want to go too much to church, would you? So the church at Antioch, they assembled themselves together. There was preaching going on. There was teaching going on. And the church at Antioch began to grow. And here's what it says there in that verse. They were first called 
Christians at Antioch. Would somebody call you a Christian? Is there enough evidence to convict you in a court of law that you're a Christian? I'll ask you a second question. Are you a Christian? Well, preacher, I, uh, you know, I've asked that question in, in maybe just a little different form or a little different way. I've asked a lot of people that question. I get a lot of different answers. I've had people tell me, I sing in the choir. Now, what in the world that has to do with being a Christian? I'll never know. But they think that by giving that answer, it somehow lets them off the hook. I sing in the choir. I was telling the folks in church last Sunday. Uh, when I lived in San Angelo, Texas, I met a guy. I knocked on his door. I said, you know, blah, 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 we're out visiting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I said to him, sir, can I ask you a question? Do, do you know for sure you're going to heaven when you die? He looked at me and said, I sing in the choir and shut the door. I sing in the choir. Like singing in the choir makes you a Christian. I mean, that'd be like saying, well, you know, running down the road makes me a car because I'm running and a car runs, so I'm running, I'm a car. See, that's ludicrous, absolutely. And so is saying, I sing in the choir, making you a Christian. Other people, say, other people tell me that, have told me this, I go to church. Huh? Well, preacher, you just said they assembled themselves together and they went to church and so they called themselves Christians. Well, they went to church, but that isn't why they called them Christians. My friend, do you think that going to church makes you a Christian? A Christian is not somebody. That's why I go to church. And I go fairly regularly. I go once a month. Oh, yeah. Once again, you wouldn't want to go to church too much, would you? Well, I go to church. Doesn't that make you a Christian? No. And you can have any analogy you want. You can have any story you want to say, you know, hey, look, I'm out in the woods. That makes me a deer. You say, that's stupid. So is the idea that going to church makes you a Christian. It does not do that. It doesn't do that. Going to church does not make you a Christian, although many people have given me that particular line of reasoning when you ask them. Or somebody else will say, and I have people call me up, and they say, Preacher, would you baptize my baby? Mm, well, some people, they want to use that. Well, I was baptized as a baby. That must make me a Christian. I was talking to a fellow not too long ago. Good guy. Oh, nice guy. Oh, he's a real nice guy. And I invited him out to church. I know he goes to church. He doesn't go very often. And I said, man, you were, you were raised in a Baptist church, weren't you? Yeah, he said, I was baptized in the Baptist church. Like being baptized makes you a Christian. Now, I believe that people who are Christians should be baptized. But I'm telling you, dear friend, just because you've been baptized, that does not make you a Christian. Doesn't wash away any sins. Doesn't make you any more fit for heaven. But yet people constantly say, well, I've been baptized. I really don't, you know, see the need for anything else. I have met people who point to being baptized as a baby as the only avenue they have for heaven. I say, what? There are multitudes of people who are staking their eternity in heaven on being baptized. Now, you can't find a verse in the Bible that 
would say that. Now you can, I'll say this, you can find some verses and pull them out and say, well, see there, that means no. The consistent teaching of the Bible is that baptism will not get you to heaven. Well, what makes you a Christian then? If they were called Christians at Antioch first, now it was a name that caught on. The word Christian means Christ-like or Christ-likeness. Can someone say that about you? Again, you know, I, I can only speak from experience. I've talked with people and talked with people before about this thing about being a Christian. And, you know, their thing is, hey, I don't need to go to church. I'm just as good as a guy that goes to church. And I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. And they're right about that. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. People say, well, well, I, I believe in God. I believe in God. Hey, I believe in the tooth fairy. Someone says, I believe in God. I believe in God. Believing in God does not make you a Christian. Even the devil believes in God. Well, preacher, look, I, I, I'm a Christian. I know I don't go to church as much as I ought to, uh, but I've been, I'm a Christian. I've been baptized. I'm telling you something, dear friend. You're listening to me today. I don't care how many times you can be baptized every single day. They can dunk you under the water every day from now until eternity. And that ain't going to make you a Christian. Or if you go to church every day from now until the time you die. That doesn't make you a Christian. No. They were called Christians first at Antioch. Well, are you going to tell us what a Christian is, or are you just going to beat around the bush all day and tell us what it isn't? Well, hang on. You say, what is a Christian preacher? If that's what they were called in Antioch first, what is a Christian? What is one? Well, it's certainly not being baptized, and it's certainly not going to church, and it's certainly not living a good life, and it's certainly not living by the golden rule. Everybody that is a Christian ought to do those things, but that doesn't make you a Christian. Well, why were those people in Antioch so special? And the word hung on. The word stuck. The term Christian. It was actually a term of derision. Ah, those guys are followers of Christ. You know the guy that was crucified over there in Jerusalem, and they buried him, and then there's this wild story that after three days he arose from the dead, and the Christians follow him. Some story like that. Hey, what made the people in Antioch Christian? Followers of Christ. Christ-like. The Bible says... A lot of things about how to become a Christian. But the consensus, the one general, the one guiding, the one definitive principle is this. To be called a Christian, one, first, you, you have to be saved. You must be saved. Jesus, in the emphatic, said, ye must be born again. You must be regened. You must be regenerated. You must have a changed life. Now, once that happens, you say, well, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. A disciple is a follower of Christ. You cannot be a follower until you've been, until you've been born again, until you've been saved. Why would you want to follow him if you're not? But they were called Christians because they were followers of Christ and Christ-like. When you met one of them, you would say, boy, there's something different about that person. Hey, couldn't anybody say that about you? Would anybody say that about you? Or would they say, ah, they're just another hypocrite. People say, I don't want to go to church with full of hypocrites. Well, come on down. We got room for one more, pal. 
they were Christians at Antioch. Would anybody confuse you with being a Christian? People say, I don't need to go to church. I'm just as good as people that go down to church. Man, them people go to church, they're a bunch of hypocrites, and they do all kinds of things wrong. Friend, I never said I was perfect, but I am forgiven, and the Christians are forgiven. Would anybody confuse you with being a Christian? Would, could anybody say, now there's somebody that is different and is following Christ. Could they point to you, to you and say that? Well, not really. Yeah, but I just think I'm good enough and I, I've been baptized and I'm doing, that will not make you, and that will not do, dear friend. Listen, listen. Those excuses and those ideas about, man, I go to church, I've been baptized, I live a good life, I live by the golden rule, I keep the Ten Commandments. Well, number one, that's not true, and you know it's not true. People come up with those ideas, those excuses, those qualifications. That don't want to make you a Christian. A Christian is someone who has realized their need of Christ and has trusted him and has decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. A Christian at Antioch was a term of derision to those who were followers, a follower of Christ. I go to church, preacher. <laughs> you haven't heard a word I said. Going to church does not make you a Christian. But being a follower of Christ. Are you saying then, preacher, you don't really have to go to church to be a Christian? Well, I, I will say that. But I'm going to tell you this, I wouldn't give you much for your religion to get you to heaven if it can't even get you to church. They were first called Christians at Antioch, followers of Christ. If they hauled you in to a court of law, would they be able to convict you? People hold on to that baptism. I'm t I met so many people in it. After a while, it gets disgusting. After a while, people just hold on to that baptism thing. Man, I've been baptized. So what? Doesn't make you a Christian. But being a follower of Christ will. Trusting him as your Savior and then forsaking, forsaking all others. One of the dear ladies in our church said that she witnessed to a friend, and that friend said, I could never live like you. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but when you are when you trust Christ, he'll give you the withal to live that life. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Are you a genuine Christian or are you one in name only? Friend, have you trusted him? And then decided to follow him. No turning back. No man having put his hand to the plow and looketh back is fit for the kingdom of God. I'm not looking back. I'm not looking back. Are you a Christian? Are you saved? Have you been born again? Has your life been changed? Are you on your way to heaven? Are you going to sit down with me and Doug and people in the kingdom of God when we eat and drink anew? My friend, trust Jesus today. Call upon him today. Ask him to be your savior today. Decide to follow him today. Because I'm telling you, tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, do you think you actually are a Christian? We don't say that to be insulting. But are you actually living the life that is Christ-honoring and you are following Christ? And do you know for sure that you have a home in heaven waiting for you when your time on earth comes to an end. If you have any questions today, or if you would like to know more about how you can know for sure that you are going to heaven when you die, give us a call today. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271 or send us an email. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled 
by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord willing, we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.